It's Wednesday, February 1st, 2012. I'm Rim. I'm Scott. And this is Geek Nights. Tonight, way late to the party, we finish our review of all 52 of the new 52. Let's do this. You know, going into this thing, I, I expected it to be a slog, but I was optimistic. I am saddened at how much of a slog it became. <laughs> I mean, it just took us so long. I mean, what? I think, like, it's been half a year almost. Now, and it's like we did half of it, and then we stopped, and then finally we get around to doing the other half, and I've pretty much forgotten. I know, and the thing is... Maybe we shouldn't talk about this until we actually get to the second part. Yeah, yeah. Of but the show. Uh, Just so you know, we're late to the party, and the saddest thing is I read most of these way back, or like right before we were going to do the episode originally. And it's like you're I, skipping to the second half of the episode. Yeah, but when I read them again now, we I got forgot. opening bits we can use right now. Oh yeah, so we missed uh, two shows because uh, Scott went out of town, and well, no, you went to meet your parents or My something. My parents came to town, and I got sick for the first time in like for fuck ever. All right, so check this out. This morning, right? See, I have this Metro card that lasts a whole year. It's annoying because it, it sort of wears out. Yeah, because I, th I think about what my Metro card looks like at the end of a month. I can't mm -hmm. imagine a year. Well, I have one that lasted a year, and it actually worked right up until the end. But I was thinking, you know, that today was the 31st, and it still had one more day, and then I would have to use the new one tomorrow, right? So I go into the subway, and like New York, you know, I didn't push a guy, but I sort of slightly cut in front of a slow guy to get to the thing, right? Uh, uh, uh. And I swipe it, and it's it expired, and I'm like, oh, are you fucking kidding me? I, 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 you know, cut a guy to, to fail swipe, you know? And I was like, why? Why is it expired? And I looked at my phone, and I'm pretty sure my phone said 31st, and not first. Obviously, it said first, because it is the first. Um... And then I went to the, you know, the check your Metro card thing, and it said, yeah, that one's expired, and your new one's good. And, of course, I was carrying the new one with me just in case. Yeah, I always, so. I always have three Metro cards. <laughs> Current one, next monthly one, and cash card for, you know, bullshit. that, that Air train. Yeah, and yeah. it variably happens. Or, you know, <laughs> strangers in town doesn't have a Metro card. Right. So I go, you know, and I just swipe the other one, and it works. And then, like, later in the day, I'm still thinking it's the 31st, and I look, and it says first. And I'm like, what? And like it was just the weirdest, you know, brain explodey. I know that makes not a good story. I have a, I have a <laughs> similar story. So for PAX, right? You know, we had we submitted our panels and all our stuff. You know, we, a long time ago. But the deadline for like completing any modifications, like the descriptions and whatever, was February first. Mm -hmm. So on the thirtieth, I was like, oh shit, I gotta make sure everything's good tonight. I forgot there was a thirty-first day. No, that's not a big deal. Yeah, but so we both <laughs> were off by one. Anyway. See, this is not a terribly great anecdote. So since you have to go over like twice as many comics as we did in the previous comic episodes concerning the DC-52, we're just not going to do news to save time. So I can go Also, home. what news? Bandai's dead. There's a new Watchmen comic coming out. Oh, God. Uh, Kazuhiro Otomo is going to be at San Diego Comic-Con, which would make me almost want to go, except for the fact that uh, if, you wanna, if you want to go, you'd have to buy tickets immediately and hotel room, what are you going to get? A hotel, it's I don't too know. too late. But I could get us in. I guarantee it. It's if already I too to. late. You have to basically buy tickets the day at uh, no, I, I, of the previous I am, Comic Con. I am confident I could get us into the Comic Con legitimately. However, we would not have a hotel, and I don't really want to go that much. Me either. But it's just you know, I said it almost makes you want to go. I didn't yeah. say I'm. I definitely need to go now. The thing is, you know, Pax is en route to be in the same situation in terms of sellout. That's not my problem. Selling out of badges, not uh, selling out of you know. Whatever it is you sell out of when you sell out. That's not my problem. Integrity. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's like a zillion news. And I also have a zillion things of the day that I will now parse out very slow. Parcel out extremely slowly, one at a time, in fact, <laughs> to make the most of them. Uh, yeah. So, of course, things of the day. Uh, I'm going to collect... There's a there's a new meme, not a new meme, a new-ish meme that I just didn't know about. Shit, Asterisk says. Uh, so I like uh, shit no one says. <laughs> but um, We need to do shit, FRC Forum says. I was poking around on the internet, and my YouTube channel, partly because I'm me, and also partly because it's always logged in in the communal computer, which a lot of different people are using, pretty much recommends pony videos for everything. You watch any video, and it recommends, like, some pony video. Yeah. So... I see this when I'm something, and then, like, when I'm something else. It's when I'm, and then, like, either a verb or a noun, like, when I'm Fluttershy or when I'm assertive. I'm like, wow, there's a lot of those. I wonder what that is. So I click on it, 
and my ears are assailed with a techno beat. Pretty good techno beat. It's pretty good. And in the and behind this techno beat, I don't know. Is, is it technically more a techno riff? I'm yeah, not, it's I'm a not riff sure. Really. It's Whatever. Not even, you know, I could we could go into the what subgenre of techno because it's a little more like electro than. But anyway. Whatever. It's a pretty good like bit. And the videos were all in the exact same format. Like, they all followed the same pattern. And it seemed to be a template to make a particular kind of character music video set to this song. Mm -hmm. And they were all really good. I was like, hey. But most of them were ponies or TF2 characters, and one was that girl from Gurren Lagann. Yep. So 90% of them were ponies. Like, I every recommend, like, I'd click on one, and then all the recommendations would be, like, 10 more that I hadn't seen that were all My Little Pony. And then I started digging and digging and digging. We found, like, one to Heavy and, like, two other Team Fortress ones. And as far as I can tell, that one to Gurren Lagann is the first one. And from what I can gather... The Rainbow Dash is the second one? Yeah, pretty much. It was from that to Rainbow Dash, and then the Pony community saw the Rainbow Dash one and made every possible... There are ones for side characters I didn't even recognize. <laughs> There's one for for not Tom Dan, but for the other rock. Oh, uh, what's the, the pile of rocks? You don't remember. It's named... Madame Le Fleur. Well, that's the bag of flowers. Yeah, that's I don't not the remember pile the rocks. Of rocks. Oh, what's the name of the I pile forgot of rocks? the name. Yeah, yeah, we both forgot. I'm a flower. Sir Lincelot. Yep. Uh, Who was the rock? The bucket of beets, which is you don't remember that one either. Yeah, we're terrible fans. So anyway, this is a so an interesting meme that kind of came about recently. So one, I challenge you guys out there to make more entries into this meme that are well, not My Little uh, Pony. You forgot to mention there was one that was sort of epic, which is the one that really stood out. Which oh, my God. King of Hyrule from Philip CDI Zelda. And it's like, so there's a whole bunch of pony ones and there's some TF2 ones and whatever. And then the one that stands out is Philip CDI King of Hyrule. And it's like, oh, my God, someone just went and grabbed the most obscure, perfect, awesome character for this video style. So <laughs> my challenge to you is, one, make videos of this to things that don't, have videos to it obviously if you want you know all of our videos and find characters that are you know make one that's more awesome than the king of hyrule one yeah it's gonna be rough it's hard i got some ideas but i gotta save them because i might make them because it's a pretty easy formula to make a video for Mm -hmm. but two what i'd love for someone to do and i'd say i'll do it but i'm not gonna do it is to chart out the time of upload of all these videos so we can confirm like where it started when it hit Pony, and then from Pony, find all the ones that came after that and try to figure out, like, the overlaps of different fan bases. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that, like, this kind of current meme would be really interesting to research, like, right now, the exact, like, timeline of it being popular. Mm. Speaking of, just kind of an aside, speaking of old memes and everything, so some one of the developers, a young one at my company, said something like, I'm really angry for something. And I was like, coins? Of course, nobody knew what the fuck I was talking about. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I'm going to show you something. And I explained the whole deal, and he watched it. And he looked at me, and he said, what the fuck was that? It's Coinbird. And, and I was like, coins. you, and I said to him, you will never, for the rest of your life, hear the words angry for and not immediately think coins. I have infected you with a permanent, irreparable, irrecoverable, irreparable. incurable, memory-based uh, meme mm-hmm. virus. Great. I was proud of that. So uh, this is website. Right, and I'm pretty sure this website's going to be hosed at some point, uh, mostly because they're using Ustream, and they're probably going to get their Ustream account banned or something. Oh, Ustream. But it's running right now. Um, this is ToonamiAftermath.com, and basically some dudes just set up their own Toonami to replace the lack of Toonami, and it's 24-7 Toonami. Uh it, right now, if you if you go to the site, at least at the moment of this recording, it's currently playing Dragon Ball Z Abridged. Up next, Dragon Ball Z Abridged. After that, Dragon Ball Z Abridged. <laughs> um, if you look at the schedule, it's like Thundercats, Dragon Ball, Gundams, Powerpuffs, you know, pretty much all the kind of things that will be on Toonami. Old X-Men, The Tick, Transformers. You know what? There's only one thing to say. Mm. Godspeed to you, good sir. Yeah, if you guys can keep this thing going. They've even got Lupin and the Midnight Run. Oh, my God. We yeah. used to watch that at midnight at RIT. Right. It's like, you know, so, and it's, it's you just watch it on Ustream illegally, I guess, or some, I guess Dragon Ball Z Abridged is 
semi legal. In fact, we watched that. <laughs> right? I mean, we watched that at a, midnight on the 1974 Color RCA. Yeah. Um, and but it's in Ustream, so there's a big chat going on pretty much all the time. Uh, these people are watching Toonami. Uh, it's also sort of questionable because they got like a little PayPal, like give us money, and I'm like, ah, uh, yeah, dudes. Yeah, it's one thing if you're violating copyright blatantly and awesomely <laughs> for great awesome, but if you're also trying to make money, yeah. But I mean, it doesn't matter. You can just go here and, and you know, in when if that if you need to fill that. You know, a void in your life that Toonami used to fill. Just go to this website while it's still running, ToonamiAftermath.com, and press play and full screen that shit. And of course, very briefly in the meta moment, the book club books are the same they've always been. We didn't record the show yet because I was sick and we were, Scott yeah, was busy. we were actually going to do the episode on Thursday. We just yeah, didn't. It'll be do, it'll be done as soon as it will be. Uh, Pax East is coming up. We'll be there. Anime Boston is coming up. We will hopefully be there if we can work it out. And beyond that, uh, we uploaded some more panels and stuff from MAGFest, so check out our YouTube channel. Check out all our internet places. <laughs> Facebook, yada, yada, yada. Facebook, Google+, Plus, Twitter, etc. From crew.com. So, week three. All right, we got to burn through this shit. So, I got some notes. So, it's you know it's been a while since we've done this. It's weird, because these are the issue ones, and it's like they're already on issue four, five, yeah, something and, like that. And so, this, is this even relevant? It doesn't matter. Yes. I spent the money for it, so we're going to do it. It is relevant because I wager the majority of the people listening to this right now have not read any of them. Probably. Anyway, uh, so where we left off, the last one we did was Superboy, which was sort of the Astro Boy. Whatever. Oh, speaking of which, remember how Superboy? How we, I, I like, I liked it. I wanted to see where it was going. Mm -hmm. I read, I think four and five in the comic book shop. Mm. Good God, did that turn into superhero boring bullshit? Uh, so right. it's no longer Astro Boy. But well, anyway, we're moving on. Let's just get into it, so you don't waste time. Regular old Batman, just Batman, not any you know Batman colon something, not you know. Got Detective Comics or Arkham whatnot is just Batman. It actually, this comic, believe it or not, has 25 pages of comics, which is four more than the average of yeah. 21. Uh, but yeah, uh, what to say about this? What I wrote is interesting. I wrote, I'm Batman, and then I wrote That's like a sure. next to it. And I wrote that it's surreal, like pseudo Frank Miller esque bullshit. Yeah, see, the thing that bothered, I wrote like down. Like, it looks like like the way something might have happened in Dark Knight Returns, but it's so... It's almost like a cliche of that kind of Batman. Yeah, the things that I noticed that were sort of weird were, number one, uh, with the, I wrote three Robins hyphen pedo question mark. Uh, I, wrote, I wrote Grayson, Drake, uh, Damien, and then I wrote Jail Time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's something going on with all these extra Robins. It's like Oh, you think. Yeah, he's got he's got three of them with him, but then apparently the first one is apparently up to no good or someone pretending No, he's it's not. Like, Clearly he's not. Obviously it's some bullshit. I mean, it had the, like, this was this had that fake out with the Joker like, "Hey, Batman and the Joker." Nope, psych. Yeah, it's just sort of annoying how they... It's like, didn't one of the Robins die? Why are they all there? Maybe there's a fourth one? I don't know. I forget. It's like this whole shit makes no sense. And that's sort of what I don't like. It's like, in the olden days, like they had a character Robin. No, they, no, to, to be fair, at least this one, it put a little word bubble under each one when it showed all three of them. It, and it showed their name, and it said, this was the first Robin, this was the second Robin. It was yeah, not great. inaccessible. But the, this is what the thing is. In the olden days of comics, they had a character Robin. You know, they died, and then they replaced him. And nowadays, you know, more recently, I guess, they turn him into a, a superhero with his own line. Right, around the eighties, right? It's like they take all. They're like, oh well, all these Robins died and came back. So what we can do is we can actually just make a whole bunch of Robins at once. It's like, well, no, there's one Robin. You killed the other ones, and you know, obviously, this is incredibly old news. It's not a recent development, but it's just you know, as a non superhero reader, right? Someone who knew comes into this as number one issue and sees four. Four Robins there. Most people in the world don't know there's more than one Robin, right? So when they see four Robins, they're like, "What?" So it's fucked up. My only real and complaint, that, and the thing is, most people they know Bruce Wayne is Batman. Yep. Most people on the street could not give you the real name of any of the Robins. Now, note they did this well in that it did not bother trying to explain who the Joker was. They well, just assumed. A, I think that they can let that one go. And Batman and Bruce that's Wayne. That's okay. But they did feel the need to explain who the Robins were. So I think you're right on that front. I think it handled it well. My complaint wasn't the Robins. My complaint was that the story... It's just, it's just something that stood out to me. The story just... 
didn't I didn't give one shit about the story. I didn't give one shit about the story. I read Most it. I was like, comics. whatever. All, all the all the other non Justice League Justice League Batman so far that we've read were way better than the actual Batman. Yep. Like this was the worst of the non Justice League Batman. Yeah. So I gave it a meh. Yeah, pretty much a meh. I'm. I would. I might read. I think the two. reason. I only reason I gave it a meh is because it wasn't like painfully bad. It's, yeah. You know, it was just not good. It felt forced. It felt like this is what Batman is. So we're gonna make Batman what Batman is. And it's the b- one called Batman. So they can't diverge. It's just got to be the core of what Batman's about. I think All Star Western know? was a better Batman than this Batman. Well, we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But uh, I would read this if I was pooping. And it happened to be in the bathroom with me. And <laughs> well, that's I didn't true for have almost something else to that's read. That's true for almost every comic book. <laughs> that's true for almost any written words. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Birds of Prey. Wow. So basically, I kind of, sort of, was getting into this, right? Like, it's about this reporter guy. Yeah. And he's sort of following these girls to see what's up with them. But they fucking kill him at the end of the first issue, and I didn't care anymore. Uh, hello. Right. I was sort. That's that was exactly what I wrote. I liked him. Right. That's what I wrote in my notes was like, wow, it takes balls to kill the main guy right you know, in the first issue. Because he's not but, the main guy. The TNA are the main exactly, guy. Exactly. But I sort of liked that guy. But they killed him because he wasn't a he- superhero or something. I know. What I thought this was going to be was, you know, the birds of prey are these kind of superhero, stereotypical, like comic book badass women. And they were going to have, like, cool heist and stories around, and this reporter was going to, like, follow them. And he was going to be, like, the straight man or, like, the, the observer. Like, it all be through his eyes. The well, fact that's that, why, the, you know, Marvels, the comic named Marvels, which yeah. is about, right, is about this guy who's just a reporter. And it's all seeing the Marvel history of the Marvel Universe through from that guy's perspective, and that's why it's so awesome. But... Here, they, it was sort of good in that way, but then it was really just, he was a temporary one-issue vehicle for this TNA fest. Unless uh, he didn't actually, the TNA wasn't that bad. It wasn't we, we as should... bad as the other comics that we will discuss soon. Yeah, let me, the so T, I, don't, I won't even call this TNA because that's, we're on well, orders no, I of think magnitude. No, see, I can't do that. See, because here's the thing, right? Relative to the other things, right? It is not bad at all. Yes, relative to but Hitler, Pinochet, not that bad. Exactly. So this is still Pinochet, right? You can't, <laughs> you know, it's still Pinochet. It's just because there's a Hitler over there doesn't mean this is not TNA. It the is. words I wrote are, it's, without the awesome guy, this is comic booky cliche bullshit, dot, dot, dot. Yep. So yeah, that's another meh. Yeah, meh. At least you know I wouldn't. The thing is, it's like if it was if all the issues were like this, it might you know. And here's the thing though, I just realized just because I was reviewing these just uh, before the show to yep, yep. get the fresh in the memory. You look at the end, and actually the guy's got blood coming out of his eyes, and then he's on fire, and we're just like, oh, he's dead. He might not be dead. He might be becoming a superhero right there, which is equally bad to being dead. But Especially because you just, got his internal monologue right before this happened. But so. it's called Birds of Prey. I'm pretty sure the point of this book is it's about girl heroes, and he's a dude, so that's not going to happen. The thing is, I think Birds of Prey as characters would probably work as a summer blockbuster like superhero movie. Well, yeah, I mean, they it's, were so, out, it's semi-Batman universe, right? I and mean, they were that's... throwing out one-liners, and it was all this kind of action-y stuff. And you know what? The action seemed like it was a little better choreographed. It would feel like some of the Ghost in the Shell kind of like action kicking I like. Kicking and punching, yeah, maybe. Yeah. The kicking and punching was more Ghost in the Shelly than other <laughs> superheroes, but yep. I didn't care and about a little, the plot. And there's a little bit less of it. Anyway. Yeah. So, okay, Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle. So, you, what you, what do you give it? Uh, uh, the Birds of Prey. First, I wrote, no, the birds of I prey. wrote Squark oh, okay. because I think that's the sound that the, uh, the Scarab made when it teleported away. I think so. Let me, let me look it up. And I thought that I, I think that's why I wrote that. Let me look it up because Crash, that thwam, was just kind of like cute, scrum, and I wasn't squish. sure what to think about it. I'm when, looking at the sound when effects. the Green Lantern appears, and he's like, "Hey, Blue Beetle thing!" There, here it is. Lethal threat. Green Lantern. Squark. Yep. Told you. <laughs> but so, I wrote yeah. Green Lantern BS. Planet three. Oh God! It's Green Lantern BS. Right. So here we a go. Bunch of bunch of superheroes and villains, teen drama, origin story, everything I hate about comic books. I did like the coloring. Right. It has that bright coloring, and especially in the high school parts, 
right? Where yeah, everything's, yeah. everything's bright and high contrast with sort of, you know, pony-esque colors, right? I really like that, uh, you know, when it's not just everything's gray like Batman. And even when they get to the action, right? It's like Blue Beetle is crazy neon is blue. blue. And, you know, the other things are not blue. Like this bad guy is crazy yellow and this other bad guy is crazy red and they're in a cyan yep. old school convertible car. And it's like the colors are just really awesome and... You know, I like the arts a My lot. My only real complaints are that, one, it started with the origin story, which always annoys me in stuff like this. It always feels better if it starts in media res with this kind of contiguous whatever universe. Yep. And two, the why the Green Lantern bullshit? Why is the Green Lantern bullshit in so many of these comics? Yeah, you could have just had that whole beetle thing without the Green Lantern coming and zapping the beetle, whatever. The Green Lantern, like... The, the only interesting thing is that that Green Lantern thing coupled with the Mayan stuff, like, oh, it landed in the Mayan era, kind of sets up all this timeline stuff for the other comics, but that's what I hate about DC <laughs> Comics. Well, but yeah, the other thing that I don't like is just Blue Beetle himself, once he turns into the superhero. is boring. It does, I mean, look at that guy. That does not look like a guy. He looks like a bad guy. He almost. is a bad guy. Remember, basically, Blue Beetle, as far as I can tell, is a ripoff of the Silver Surfer story. But the Silver Beetle Surfer scared. is a good guy. He's the goodest guy. But he was sent as the herald to the place that Galactus is going to fucking eat. No, that's not the story of the Silver Surfer at all. But isn't that what he was supposed to do? Well, that was that was his ch temporary job. Yeah, and you know what? That's the Blue Beetle's temporary job, too. The Scarab goes to a planet and makes a super killing whatever that prepares the planet for the rest of them to, like, cocoon it and eat it or whatever it is they do. Uh, maybe. They told you all this in this comic. You just don't remember. Most likely. Yeah. It, that, it, it's bullshit. I didn't like it. This is bad. Also, uh, via V, you know, our discussion last time, you know, about, you know, the, the sort of forced, you know, racial diversity. Oh, this my is, God. This is for this one was forcing the Hispanics, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, it, it really it bothered me how much it went out of its way. Yeah. So, uh, and it's like it's like it's weird because it's like we're trying to be diverse. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in a sort of toned down, not so caricatured uh, racial stereotype in there. But they do it in such a milk toast way that it almost feels. It's more like offensive. if I needed. It's like if I needed my comic to be more, you know, Russian, and I put sort of soda popinski in there, but I made him less comical. Less drunkinski. <laughs> yes, less drunkinski. Uh, so what'd you give this one? Bad. Bad. I just I have no interest in ever reading another page of Blue Beetle. I gave it meh, but it was low meh. So. <laughs> Captain Atom. So I, I gotta ask you. So when you looked at Captain Atom, I thought <clears throat> first I picked it up and I said, "What Watchmen? <laughs> is this just Doctor Manhattan?" And I flipped through it like, "Yeah, it is just Doctor Manhattan." Well, I looked at it and my first thing was like, "Oh, this is gonna be real bad." Oh, I just assumed it was Doctor Manhattan. I assumed it was gonna be awful. So then I read it, and actually, uh. It was surprisingly awesome. Really? I found it really boring and trite. You thought it was boring? For some reason, his is the weird thing, right? Is like, my memory tells me that when I first read it, I thought it was awesome. Like, unexpectedly so. But upon rereading it, like, the first half of it is mostly that typical talking about nonsense uh, words. Quote, quote, <laughs> I wrote Dr. Manhattan, question mark, and then expository explanation of the bullshit made-up powers. Exactly. I don't but need that. For some reason, the first time I read it, right, I thought it was awesome. And looking at it now, the only reason I think that I thought it was awesome originally was because the art is, like, just unbelievably awesome. The art's pretty good. I'll give it that. Like, look at that fucking monster on this page in the back. Did oh, you, yeah. you see that, that shit? It had, well, with all the mouths my, coming out of it But and that's shit? part of my problem with it. It had too many kind of discontinuous plot threads and the sudden volcano and all this kind Plus, of Plus, I sort of like how Captain Adam himself is drawn sort of all pencil-y. <laughs> You know, it's like, oh, man, that's kind of cool. Yep. It, it, it had a lot going for it. The only thing I really didn't like, other than the expository bullshit of the made-up powers, was, one, Indian Point doesn't look anything like that. Well, no, oh, my God, this is like, what was the other one? Static Shock. Where, where they I was show, complaining, like the, Queensboro the Queensboro Bridge. Bridge is not, it's like these people. It's like, I can see the Queensboro Bridge right DC now. and Marvel Comics in New York? I know the artists live all over the place. Scott, the, and they, they use FTP to York. send in their pages. Just take Google take Google Maps and just go somewhere. If you're going to say something sudden in no, London. Google Earth. And Google Street View will cover you. Yeah. Right? There is no fucking Just excuse. Just zoom in and look at what it looks like and at least approximate it. <laughs> but, uh... I don't know. There were too many plot threads that I just... I didn't care. 
Yeah, anyway. And it seemed a little too superhero-y, like the vol- when he kept like <laughs> internally monologuing what he was doing with his powers is when I didn't care anymore. Yeah, that was the part that I noticed on this on the re- on the you know just now taking another look at it that I was like, why did I like think this was good? Now here's the thing: if I had never read The Watchmen, I might have thought this was a lot better. Mm. But I've read Watchmen twenty times. When Doctor Manhattan is right doing now. his internal monologue of his identical powers. It was brilliant. Here's the difference between Captain Adam and Dr. Manhattan. Dr. Manhattan is omnipotent. I mean, uh, is omniscient, and Captain Adam is not. Uh, here's another difference. One of them has a dick. That's right. Well, I think Captain Adam does have a dick. He's just hiding it between If they his never legs. show it, he doesn't have it. I've decided <laughs> that I, that is now, if you don't see it, it's not there. <laughs> Because yes, Game sir, of Thrones, it's true. This I, man has no dick. I, I've seen I've seen dicks in shows more and more lately, and I think we need to end this prejudice against dicks. Okay, dickless. Uh, so yeah, I, the thing is, I'm gonna read it again to, before I, you know, I'm gonna adjust my original first impression of good. All right. Well, based on what you said, I'm it's gonna, definitely low good. I'm gonna adjust my original from bad to meh because you make valid points. I kind of forgot about that art. Right. So meh. All right. Catwoman, the All right. worst. All right. Oh, God. No, not the worst. Bad. It was real bad. It was not the worst. So is it just me or was the Everything sex? Everything was bad. Was the sex scene between Catwoman it was disgusting. and Batman gross? It was so gross. In fact, if you look at my notes, it says there's only two things in my notes, I think. They are... Oh, no, three things. I wrote weird Batman okay. sex number, and cheesecake. Number one, the first thing I wrote was everyone said it was awful before I read it because it was all people saying how bad it was, right? So I went in with sort of a bad expectation from people. Interesting. I number point two out. was cheesecake, just like everyone said. And number three... Ew, just E-W, <laughs> E-W. Normally, when you have sex in a comic, it's kind of hot. Like, if you read Lost Girls, it's impossible not to be aroused unless you're a eunuch. I mean... Or it's tastefully <laughs> done. Like, in Watchmen, there is a sex scene between some, like, 30-something, one a pretty schlubby guy. And you know what? It's an interesting and tasteful, heartfelt scene. This is disgusting. Now, you can argue... It's also because sort of Batman has, like, how many ribs? It's like... Also because Batman... I don't know, Batman's face while they're having sex, I feel like, I don't know, you could argue that the sex was gross on purpose because that relationship between those two kinds of people would actually be pretty gross and fucked up. I think the other thing is that- So you could argue that that was an artistic way to present how fucked up that relationship would be. Yeah, but it's like you don't want to have this shit explicitly depicted, right? You want to have it just, you know, you can imply that, that's fine. But don't just be drawing, you know, straight up stuff like that. It's like... But it beyond that, it focused way too much on Catgirl's tits and ass. No, I mean, look at Did you see what this page earlier in the book before there's any sexing? And it's just like, excuse to draw boobs in a bra. That d- it, it looks like... Look how much detail's in that bra. Dude fucking went to Victoria's Secret to get like, you know, look at the mannequins or whatever. Yep. And meanwhile, all the background characters are just like hardly there. Yep. I just and the story like whatever and Very, they what story and it well it they referenced all this stuff that was not explained you had to already know about Catwoman or it didn't make sense it just, yeah, this was whatever. bad real bad I can't say it's the worst though in terms well, I mean of the sexism. Catwoman movie was bad I didn't even see it but everyone said it was bad it's not the worst of in sexism all right because we haven't talked about uh, uh, what's coming it's up coming all up. right so uh, DC Universe presents Dead Man so this right. this series is actually um. You know, it's not just Dead Man. I mean, this issue is just Dead Man, but the comic is actually DC Universe Presents, which means it'll change eventually. Um, it might have changed already from Dead Man to something else. So I want to talk about this one first because I read Dead Man last because I saw what Dead Man looked like and I kept. He looks run- like Daredevil. So I kept running into Dead Man, like in a bunch of the other. Well, comics. didn't you read? Didn't you read? Yeah, I know, but didn't you read Dead Man in uh, what's it called? The uh, the Wednesday comics. Remember the big? There was a Dead Man in there. Oh yeah, but so I ran into Dead Man in all these places, right? Like, mm-hmm. in, and even in yep. the New Fifty Two, like he, he was, was in, in a there. lot. He's in a lot of comics, apparently. And I didn't care at all about him. When I've I picked, never cared about. Him. So when I picked this one up, I was like, oh my god, now I have to read Dead Man. So I put it at the bottom of the pile. Mm. I five read it actually yesterday. All right. And I actually like the comic a lot. You really do? I like the Dead Man comic. Okay. I think it's a neat story. It's not superhero-y at all. Well, I mean, Dead Man's not supposed to be super. I think, you know, I don't know much about the history of Dead Man, but it seems like he's Oh, just- fuck the history. Pretend I read just this. Yeah. It's a pretty good story about 
mythology and death and this guy's kind of quantum it's like hindu mythology mixed with quantum leap yeah and i kind of dig that like i can't figure out though like what the deal with dead man is because every time i read a comic with dead man in it which is I, like i don't know why is he that popular that he's in all these that's things that's what i couldn't figure out but until it, I read it's like this. he has a different like i can't tell what his story is i have to read the wikipedia about him or something to get the real deal you know what though I, if it's, his story, it's hard to tell if his story is what i read in this right here i want to read the rest of this dead man story yeah but you know basically from what i can tell is just anything dealing with death is like you know that's that's dead man he deals and you know he's, he's already dead but he's still alive somehow well and, because of uh, rama and such yeah but. but yeah um you know i didn't like it as much as you did well, i was Scott, just sort of meh did you like quantum leap i never watched that much quantum leap i watched okay. like maybe one or two episodes when it was on after some cartoon i may have seen all of quantum leap that's good for you. So I I like Dead Man. I've was, seen about as much Quantum Leap as I've seen you know MacGyver or anything else like that. I'm just, so. I was really surprised that it was a pleasant surprise. Partly because I went into Dead Man with probably the lowest expectations because I kept not because I expected I'd hate it because I expected it to be boring and I wouldn't give a shit because every ever t- every time I'd ever run into Dead Man in any other media I didn't care and then when I actually got to Dead Man himself I actually cared about his story. Mm-hmm. So, Green Lantern Corps. What the fuck is this bullshit? <laughs> so, wait, so my Seriously. notes. Seriously. <laughs> That's all I wrote in my notes. What the fuck is this bullshit? Yeah. So, uh, f- the first thing I wrote is Lone Wolf, No Cubs. And I don't know why I wrote that. <laughs> uh, s- doesn't, uh, I don't know. Yeah, the second thing I wrote was, I only care about the badass evil dude. What, the red guy? Yeah, Earth stuff is moronic. Uh, and the third thing I wrote was Planet Nerd. Seriously? Or is it Planet Nero? I can't... What's the name of the stupid planet? I, oh, I don't even... I, I think it's Nero, but it's like, oh, come on. Really? Here's what bothers me. One, why is the Green Lantern crap in, like, all over all these comics? Because that's the most popular shit they got going on, and... Cause the <laughs> no, dude, the Green Lantern story, the, the this, like, cosmology of the Green Lantern core and all the, these different colored rings is actually very similar to Sailor Moon's overall cosmology. Well, that there's the thing. Before the 52, before they ended that and started this whole new thing where they wiped the slate almost clean, right? That The Green Lantern stuff was the biggest, most popular stuff that the superhero fans loved the most that the Jeff Johns guy wrote. Remember we read that Rebirth and it was awful? I know, I know, but I don't Starting with that Rebirth, that Rebirth comic that we read and hated started this big wave of all this Green Lantern stuff spawns directly from that trade and you know this is just carrying that forward because they're not you know they're not ch- bro- fixing what ain't broke at least in terms of what they care about which so, is selling to nerds here's why i don't like the green lantern because it is both the epic space gigantic like incomprehensible plot and the like super i'm just a dude trying to get by on earth plot and it tries to met- let those two overlap, and they don't overlap at all. Yeah, this is why I l- actually like a lot of things like, say, Silver Surfer and such, because what you get is just epic space plot only. It's like, there are gods. They have godly powers, and they have godly battles. End of story. <laughs> right? That's it. God versus God. No man. You know. And then if they're giving you a man story, right, it's Spider-Man. It's just a dude. And you don't see Spider-Man fighting the gods, at least not for serious. He always sort of hides in the corner while the big boys take care of it. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, why the fuck am I here? Just because I'm the most famous character. I mean, I Bat- have to be in the comic. I'm just going to hide in the corner. Batman my will webs. fight the gods. But yeah, my webs, they're going to stop the gods. <laughs> <laughs> Squirt. <laughs> <laughs> but like the DC, like, I don't know. The Green Lantern stuff is just so, like it doesn't even make sense that a lot of the other things that happen, like if they overlap all these universes, fine. But then half the other problems that happen don't make sense because the Green Lantern Corps would have just stepped in and fixed it. Yep. And also, this comic makes zero sense if you don't know what the deal is with all these other rings. Yeah, this is, uh, well, I mean, none of this stuff. So yeah, I put it as bad. I put it as the worst. The worst. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll change yours to worst. Not in terms of sexism. Again, we're getting to <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, we're getting to that. Okay. It's coming. So Legion of Superheroes. We did Legion Lost last time. This was the same 
fucking thing. Well, hold on, hold on. This was a little better than Legion Lost, right? It had all the same problems as Legion Lost, like plot that doesn't make sense, a million characters that, you know, they just like, look at this double page spread. They drew all these characters in this scene, like, so that, because there's fans of these obscure characters, and they put little tags on some of them, you know, like Dream Girl, Element Lad, Cosmic Boy. Cosmic Boy, really? That's like something a five-year-old would make up, like X-Cop. Well, um, I like how it noted some of their powers. Like the one guy, his power is he can induce mass to way more. Yeah, great. Thanks. Uh, Comic Queen, really. Okay, so they drew all these characters under this double page spread so fanboys could be like, oh, there's the character I like, but they're not even saying anything. Like They're just there to appear. And that's like, I noticed that same thing when I read the extremely famous uh, DC comic Crisis on Infinite Earths, you know, the original Crisis. Oh, yeah. And it's like they would just have pages and pages where they would just show all these universes with, and they just draw all these characters, hundreds of them, and none of them would really do anything, you know, pertinent to the plot except for the big ones like Superman and Flash and whatever. And it was just they put him in there just so they could put them all in there to, you know, I guess because if you're a fan and you're just seeing the picture of the character gives you some feeling or idea, but it doesn't do anything for a normal person. Yep. The um, only thing that made this better, I think, than the other Legion Are you going to say the same thing as me? Let's find out. Was that the two characters we followed the most, the two who ah, actually... You're saying the same thing as me. ...actually seemed to have some personality and talked to each other and did stuff like real people. Yeah. Uh, so, and the art was better. Right. So the Brainiac guy... And who was the other one? I don't know, but I really like her. No, not the girl. The other, the dude. Um, I don't, don't ask me names. Ma, okay, people. Mon L. So he's a Superman kind of guy. So he's from the Superman planet. Oh, yeah, that guy. And Brainiac, whatever, the green guy. You know, they actually had character and they were kind of awesome. And I kind of wish they would just make a buddy book with those two guys. <laughs> right? It's <laughs> just like the really smart guy and the really strong guy. You know, it's a stereotypical cliche deal. But you throw in the superhero powers and, you know, you sort of surround them with, you know, like bring in one of these crazy characters per issue that can sort of mix it up and put a different spin on them, you know, because they have all these people to mix up with. So it's like issue number one could be smart guy, strong guy and Comet Boy. And issue number two could be smart guy, strong guy and Harmonia or what I'm just looking at characters in this book or Starboy. Wow, Starboy looks so gay. Oh my god. I'm like, I don't want to say gay to be homophobic, but really look at this dude. Like <laughs> I mean gay as in he looks like he is a homosexual. Not, you know, like not yeah. that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, exactly. Like straight up. He is, you know. Uh it's like they did that on purpose. I don't know. I don't know if they did. But anyway. But it, it doesn't matter <laughs> because the plot is still largely incomprehensible. Yeah, despite liking those two characters, uh, it's still bad. Okay, Nightwings. This is the missing Robin, right? As far as I can tell, this guy was the first Robin. I like this guy. Really? I, I don't like the comic, but I kind of <laughs> like him as a guy. Okay. Because it's kind of similar to Batman stories, but he's a little more... It's like Batman if you didn't have crippling emotional problems. <laughs> I guess that's like, what I, it I is. I enjoy that. I enjoy watching a Batman who isn't just like, I'm brooding Batman. Yeah. Yeah. What I actually like the most about this comic is that it, you know, of course it had fighting and whatever, but in terms of pages of fighting, uh, a lot less, you know, than uh, the other comics. Some of the comics you had here, are just pages and pages of fighting. Here you had like a whole bunch of pages of circus uh, and talking to people at the circus yeah. and stuff like that. It's like there was actually, and it wasn't just talking, you know, to explain what the bad yeah, guys Yeah, the dialogue was reasonable dialogue. I wrote reasonable dialogue yeah. on my notes. And, you know, it was like, hey, there's something is sort of happening here. The only note I wrote was Emo Robin. <laughs> <laughs> so meh. Yeah, it's definitely meh. It doesn't stand out as bad. No. So Supergirl. Uh, no, Red Hood and the Outlaws oh, is next. Oh, right. The worst. <laughs> the worst? So, the worst, in terms of sexism, Red Hood and the Outlaws, you win. You think this is the most sexist? I think, oh, you're right, this is the one. Because Sorry. Because Wall I, Voodoo... I, was, I thought that one was called something different, but no, this is the one. Wall Voodoo is pretty goddamn sexist. It at least tries to pretend it's not. Yeah. And this one was made extra bad, Red Hood and the Outlaws, by the fact that there's that interview in the back of like every comic, and they ask the guy who drew Starfire. Oh, like, really? I gotta find this. Oh my god, <laughs> let me read it verbatim. Jesus Christ, that sold. Me. Oh, it's not. Let me find it. Let me pause it. Oh, right. So they asked, you know, what was your favorite page in this first issue, and why? And oh, let me guy, guess, the perverted page. So one guy gives a crappy answer. I like them all, and I can't choose. 
But Scott says, and I quote. Well, not me, Scott. Yeah. Corey, you know, a.k.a. Starshine or whatever, stepping out of the ocean, just basking in the sunshine. I love the joy on her face. The people of this planet may not want her here, but God, how she loves this place. Now, if you look at that page, none of that is conveyed. What is conveyed is ridiculous tits, ridiculous (laughs) ass. It's all shiny. It is amazing to behold and the fact that this guy could say that with a straight face means that he is either a misogynistic pervert or i think so he's or, the kind of guy who reads the comics of the tna and loves it and he'll if you like question him about it he'll probably be like yeah it's fucking awesome this he's super he's like superman's drawn all muscly what's the problem this comic makes almost no sense like the plot's all over the place who's that girl with the black eyes why what's all this stuff she's talking about who's that guy who got murdered yeah i'm so actually i didn't even notice that those are interviews in the back of these books because it was just like you get to the back of every book and there's the white page with the black text and i thought it was just advertisement copy and i thought it was the same in every book i didn't bother to read them so now that i know that there's these sort of interviews in the back I might go and actually check some of them out just to see if there's other crazy shit like that. But I'm amazed at how horrible this was just for that. This was the worst. I mean, I hey, have... you want to have sex with me? Because I'm not having sex with my boyfriend yeah. right now. The only things worse than this that I have seen, right, are things like, you know, Chubra and Kiss Excess and those sorts of things. It does, you know, in terms of superhero comics that aren't actually porn. The thing is, it's almost like actual porn is better in this, right? It's just like, ah, it's awful. I mean, they literally made her a character who will just totally have sex with guys with no strings attached and no consequences. Because she's an alien. She doesn't care about having sex. Yep. And she's just... And seriously, those breasts... She's... Right, but she's an alien, so she's bright orange, but that also happens to be like the color of being super tanned, and she's in a tropical paradise, and she's wearing almost nothing... And yeah, yeah, and that's the focus of like three or four pages of the book. She takes up the whole page. It's pretty bad. It's the worst. So, so Supergirl, Supergirl is much less scantily clad, although still, you know, sort I don't of. Know, I got, I kind of dug like the story in that it didn't really give you one. It kind of set you in the middle of this crazy situation, and mm-hmm. then Superman appears at the end. But I don't know if I care what the story is. No, I mean, most of it was just fighting robots. And actually, the way, you know, it's drawn and the action... Well, it had the nice touch of she's basically screaming that she doesn't understand what's going on, and all the guys she's fighting are also screaming the same thing, but because they don't speak each other's languages, like, they're fighting with each other because neither one of them realizes what like what's happening. Yep. But, yeah. I don't know, I, I'm not sure where this is going. I kind of liked how... <laughs> You know, they sort of, you know, the thing that always bothers me all the time is when superheroes, super, superpowers are not used to their maximum extent, right? It's like, how come if there's a bad guy, you shouldn't even see Superman coming. You shouldn't even talk to him. You should just see the bad guy explode like Kenshiro. Just, and it won't even be like Kenshiro where Kenshiro walks up and goes, wata. It's just, maybe you'll see a blur, you know? It's just like instantly the bad guy will just explode because Superman is just everywhere on Earth at all the times and every bad guy gets punched in the face and that's it. But that never happens. But in this, they sort of do, you know, when anyone does anything that sort of pushes a superpower to the limit and shows the potential of it, it sort of gets me a little, you know, optimistic. Because, like, she starts hearing things that people are saying really far away. Notice how all those things are from all the other New from 52. From the other comic books. Like, she can hear the things that other people are saying in these other 52 with her super hearing. And it's like... You know, you would, and I wonder, if I hadn't read the other 52, if I had read this very first, would I have known that those things she was hearing were from the other, or even from far away? You know, it's like, I don't know. Yeah, I think but I it was still But it was still cool whether I knew it or not. Uh, but yeah. And then, you know, Superman sort of shows up at the end, and it's sort of like I was simultaneously happy and sad to see him at the same time. Because, uh, like, on the one hand, it's like, okay, he's just going to come and fix this bullshit. You know, which is sort of what probably should have happened. But B, uh, why can't it just be about Supergirl? <laughs> why yeah. does it also have to be about Super Everyone? Why does everything have to be about the Green Lantern? Right, so I gave it a meh. I also gave it a meh. And that I would read the second one just to find out, but 
I read the fourth one, I think, and it seems to turn into the same bullshit as everything else. All right. In so, the end. Wonder Woman. So, when I, I said this before about a billion times, yeah, we, but we agree. The cover of Wonder Woman is like the best cover. I wish the whole comic looked like but that. You those see thick this lines. cover, and you're just like, oh my God, this is going to be the greatest. And that, you know, it's sort of like we have those things today that are like, oh my God, look at this drawing of the X Men. I wish there was a whole X Men comic that looked like this one drawing, and there never is. This is like, oh my God, look at the cover of this Wonder Woman. I wish there was a whole comic that looked Look like this Wonder Woman. Wait a minute. This is on the cover of a comic. I bet this whole comic looks like... And then it doesn't. And it's like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You've used this image of Wonder Woman to advertise the fuck out of the 52 so much. And then the inside of the comic doesn't even fucking look like that. I mean, it looks... You know, close. It's good. Close like, the art's not bad. It's not bad, but it doesn't look like that. It's like, ah, oh, damn it. But that brought it down from, oh, I'm going to read all this. But yeah. you know what? I kind of like the story. I like how it didn't involve a lot of the other superhero BS. Yeah, it, it only involved Wonder Woman. Right? And, and it was Wonder Woman. You know, it, was, it was kind of in keeping with the whole Wonder Woman thing. Yeah, it's like they didn't really exploit Wonder Woman for TNA or anything like that. But I think it's sort of like they purposefully don't do that, right? Wait a minute. Because that, it's that's, Wonder Woman? That's a dangerous argument <laughs> to make. If they do exploit, it's because they're exploitative. If they yeah. don't exploit, it's because they're trying to pretend they're not exploitative. You know, and also, like, Wonder Woman is... Uh, an Amazon, right? So it's actually they did a really good job of drawing her really tall. You know, it's like because she's supposed to be. A lot of times people fail to do that, but it's like you look at Wonder Woman, you're like, damn, she's like seven feet tall. Watch the fuck out, right? She's like a giant, and she's supposed to be. You know, like she's defending this other person, and it's like, you know, and the thing is, by drawing her that way, it actually, you know, not only makes her look as tall as she is and is supposed to be, but actually, like, she sort of, you know, explodes off the page because he's so gigantic. But I dug this. I I actually want to read the next one. Um, uh, maybe. I would definitely want to read it more if it looked like the cover. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I give it a high meh. I like, also like, give it a high meh. It's like meh plus. Yeah, meh plus, but not good. Okay. So that actually took a while, so we're going to not do the fourth well, week right that now. that also happens to be the end of the third week. We yeah. thought we would do them both at once, but uh, it gets We had just... so much to say. Yep. We did. I guess. Yeah. So let's, uh, we'll do week four, you know. It'll we, come. We won't, it won't be six months from now. <laughs> It'll be soonish. And you know what? Uh, some of the ones that we said were good, some of them, I'll get the trade, and maybe we'll talk about those first trade volumes. Yeah, I, I, any one I said I want to read more of, I, I th- th- that means I would read the trade. Yeah, like a couple months from now, they're actually going to come out with the hardcover volume ones of some of these. So None get- of these was good enough where <laughs> I would buy <laughs> no. the issues. No, but, you know, a couple, so give it like four or five months and you'll start to see some trades uh, of this stuff. So a trade will usually cover the first six issues of one of these. So, yeah. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brand OK for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night.